Bismillah wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah. My dear wonderful people, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. In a day and age where a lot of things have changed from the past, men are more exposed to women these days and women are more exposed to men directly or indirectly. Many couples suffer, suffer in their relationship. And that add to that, the taboo of the culture that whatever problems you have in your couple must stay in. Men use this to further abuse the women. And women don't want to feel stupid or idiots if everybody else knew that this woman here has got problem in her relationship. So everything is kept hidden until one day when the break happens. Then they start running right and left. And guess what? We have sihr. We have an eye, envy. <laughs> it makes me laugh. When people spend years in abuse and silent torture, and then suddenly they threw it just like that. That's a brush of signature. It's because of sihr. Somebody has put sihr on us. That's why my marriage is not working. Well, it's not the case. 99%, it's not the case. Sihr exists, but not. For now, if I wanted to believe every person that has approached me to help them with their marriage, or their life, or their business, or whatever, and believe their story of sihr, I would have written up probably like 500 to 1,000 cases, severe cases. Most of the time, the sihr is in your own brain, how you negatively think about the world, and most predominantly, ignorance. But in this talk here, as you are a couple, I want to give you four pointers. Four of the biggest major signs that you're probably going to divorce or your marriage is heading south or your life is going down into a black pit. And I'm sorry to break this, but uh, I'm kind of like tired every time to hearing the same LP, the same record, the same song played over and over and over and over. People really uh, behave in some peculiar ways and when problems happen, Guess what? They blame it on Sihar and blame it on other things when they should have paid attention when problems started happening. The very first thing that you want to understand that there aren't many things more heart-wrenching than finding out that the person you so much love is thinking actually of leaving you or kicking you out of the house. And uh, there are many times where you don't have a say because the damage has been done. Sometimes you have a little here or there, and at other times, the person just loses plain interest. My dear brothers and my sisters, pay attention to what I am going to say to you and take it seriously in your relationship. Because once you notice these signs, you can then make the decision to either address the issue before it's too late, or you can turn the tables and end the relationship on your own terms and conditions. But once any of these signs start occurring, the next ones are pretty close and the divorce is looming out there. The very first sign that you want to pay attention to is your partner starts distancing himself or herself, either physically or emotionally. Many people play it, I am busy. Many people, the kids, oh, I've spent the whole day with the kids and I'm tired at night. Many women, when the husband wants to, close, to get close to them, I'm sorry, I have a headache. I thought that this was like a general excuse non-Muslim women gave, only to hear that Muslim women and Muslim men do. Men working too much, men spending the night in continuous salat, but not <laughs> spending the quality time with his wife. So the very first red flag is any kind of distancing behavior, either physical or emotional. And uh, the physical distancing occurs when your partner seems to be making less and less time for you. This is a common mistake that happens between Muslims. When they get married, <laughs> Muslims, subhanAllah, they are baby production machines. They're not humans that actually are for each other. Notice, as soon as they get married, the very first year, a baby is born. And then they're called um this and ab that, and they become parents. The mother spends more of her time with the child. And then the guy turns his head towards feeding the family. And the family, the very first seed of distance has been sown. Until now, I haven't heard of any couple that says when we got married, we decided to postpone the, the baby production machine for five years, for three years, and actually get to know each other, build a history, build the golden age, something that we can cling on to. 
should someday we have a problem together. I don't see any Muslim doing that. The very first moment they tie the knots, baby making machine. Nine months down the line, and then guess what? She becomes a mother, and he becomes a father, and bye-bye, the romantic relationship. Show me one couple that is so romantic, just like when they were married the very first day. <laughs> Not much. Not many. And if you are one of those guys, you want to really make sure that you are going to hang on to this relationship with your teeth. And you can borrow the teeth, and I can borrow you. You can borrow my teeth as well to hang on to that relationship. So distance in here, you have to make sure. And if you see your wife always kind of like busy with the kids, always busy with the cooking, always busy with the house, don't say, Allah help her. Oh, yes, I understand. It's a responsibility. That's crap. That's a wall of distance being built. So many families today, they kick their husbands out of the house because the benefits are being paid by the government. Before, it was the man who was feeding. So the woman couldn't actually kick the man as free as she wanted. But here in England and in Europe, huh, the, as soon as she gets babies, the government gives her a house, gives her benefit. And I hear in some uh, uh, Somali, Bengali, Pakistani, and some North African communities, they fight and divorce for what? Who controls the benefit? And guess what? The benefit that is given for the children is not permissible to use on your parents. The child benefit is for the child as it indicates. You cannot buy a car with it. That money is given to you so that you use on your children, not on your parents. If you use it on your parents, you get a major sin for taking the rights of your children. A lot of people don't know these things and a lot of people don't even care about knowing these things. So physical and emotional distancing. Romance, same good word. Many couples, romance to them is haram. It's like drinking wine. Really, being romantic with the wife is only the five minutes before the sexual intercourse. That is romance. Past that, nothing. I've heard enough abuse to last me a long time in my life. So very first one that you want to do this is your partner starts distancing herself or himself either physically or emotionally. And you really, really want to start discussing the matter. Don't keep it silent. Don't listen to your husband when he say, don't tell anybody. That's the first sense and the first sign of emotional abuse. He's going to abuse you because once he guarantees you are not going to tell this to anybody, the abuse starts and there is no end to where it gets. And you will suffer in silence. And you will cry at night. And guess what? And you will make a dua and Allah will not listen to your dua. Why? Because you're not doing what Allah tells you. Stand up for yourself. Talk to people. If he abuses you, if he's doing wrong, talk to him nicely. If he doesn't listen, talk to your wali. Why is wali there? It's not just to give you the time of marriage and he disappears. No, the wali it comes from the Arabic term al-awwal, i.e. the first. Al-wali is the first next kin, next person to you that is important enough to give you as a wife and is also the first person that you're going to go to when problems occur. Do that. And let your husband know you have a male supporting you. A lot of the kids of today calling themselves husbands are very abusive. They are just an abuse machine. Billah. So this is the number two one. Number two, your partner makes big changes to his daily routine. It's, it doesn't happen overnight, but one day you will notice that the person actually doesn't spend much time together. We don't do anything. We don't go out together. He goes out most of the weekends himself with his friends. He's always with brothers. She's always with sisters. And then you start wondering, when was the last time? Let me ask you a question right now. When was the last time you did an activity of worth and quality with your partner with the sole purpose of reigniting the relationship, that golden time which you forgot to build? Not much. Don't make your relationship as open your legs, make a baby, open your legs again one more time to let the baby come out and that's life. Now we will be from this kind of life. This is not what Islam came for. So when your partner makes a big change in their daily life, 
You want to really make sure that you know what you are on about. Because this is one of the most obvious signs of a troubled relationship. Another thing to watch out for is when your partner starts spending more time with a new group of people or new group of sisters. So, my dear brothers and my sisters, and nowadays your partner spends too much time on the computer doing the research, reading about this, reading about that. And you are there in the kitchen cooking, or you are there in the bedroom sitting and looking at the ceiling, or you are somewhere there suffering in your own loneliness. So your partner makes big changes in her or his life is one of the great givers. So this is a buildup. Goes the number three. You notice a change in the frequency of your argument. You don't argue a lot. You hardly ever argue. Yes, there are times when you are okay, but I'm talking here about a troubled relationship. At one point, you argue, you discuss, you, you disagree, there is a problem here. And at other times, there is, because of thus distancing, the arguments lack big deal. Because you don't want a headache. He doesn't listen. I talk to him, he doesn't listen. She is too touchy. If I talk to her, she will burst. So it's better not to talk. That is the third sign that the relationship is really at the belly button level. Now, let me tell you about the fourth one that sets the things completely south. And that is the level of physical intimacy, which drones and drowns and goes, drops to an all-time low. And here the physical intimacy, remember on them days when you got married, you were freshly married, that you needed a lot of towels because of the number of showers you took. That was a good day, right? Now, compare your life right now and to that time. What has changed? You are still you, and he is still him. And don't worry, the age doesn't play a lot in this equation. So let me tell you something. When you feel that the level of physical intimacy has dropped, that is the great giver that the relationship has gone south. So many couples are divorced, but they live together. Really. They become good friends. They become just okay. Perhaps they have a, an intimate encounter once every month, two months perhaps once, or uh, once every six months. Or sometimes when they have it like, let's say, to kill a, really an eagle, I'd say once a week, it's not quality at all. You feel like you're talking to a wall or you're just sleeping with a pillow. And sometimes you ask yourself, what am I here? I'm not feeling anything. I feel aroused. But this person here is like, I don't feel nothing. It's because the relationship has gone south. Because your body has absolutely rejected any emotionality. Internally, you have built a protective wall. Your heart, your body, your brain, and your intimate parts are no longer connected to the reality of what your eyes see. No more cuddlings, no more massages, no more foreplays, nothing. When the relationship reaches this stage, it's just a cancer terminal. When the couple will die, it's only a matter of when, not about if. Unless the couple really rejuvenates itself. And how that happens is by taking a break, a year or two, and then see how things go back and maybe give it another shot. From my own experience, when a woman has had enough or a husband has had enough, there is no return point. And I say it as blunt as it is. It's quite normal for a couple to keep having a relation sexual ship at least once a week throughout their life. Throughout their lives. If you are only seeing action once a month, your relationship is 75% troubled because once on a four weeks, that's 75% trouble. If you are having an uh, intimate relationship with your husband, once every fortnight, the relationship is troubled 50%. If you have it once a week, that's a healthy level. Keep it up. Subhanallah. Why is Islam being accused for the wrongdoing of these people? I don't know. Now, another question that is also a byproduct of the number four, and that is when there is a lack of a level of intimacy. I remember one day I was uh, working with a gentleman 
who couldn't do anything with his wife because she was very rejected him and repulsive. And I don't mean any of you, but it's somebody that I worked with. One day he sent me a message. And he goes, uh, when I drive past the prostitutes in the street, he goes, I feel aroused. <laughs> I told him, well, <laughs> how far can you go and how low can you go? So now you feel attraction to a prostitute. And you had a wife and you abused and you don't feel attracted to her. But you see, my brothers and my sisters, I want you to pay attention to this. Our sexuality, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it, and just like he made us, we eat, we need food to feel satiated, and the same thing. Our sexual desires are based on hormones. The hormones are based on our emotions and thoughts. If a woman doesn't think too much about her husband, her sexual level towards him will diminish. But her desires, needs are still in place. The brain will compensate by that by giving her erotic thinkings, erotic thoughts. And she starts daydreaming about this and daydreaming about that. And the body suddenly starts responding to these thoughts. She will feel aroused and she will feel around all the world. But when she sees her husband, nothing happens. It's because as soon as the body meets that familiar physique or familiar body, the body straight away goes into a chaos, emergency shock, and produces the negative hormones which bring back that nasty attitude of that husband or that wife. And lo and behold that, it creates a layer. That layer supersedes the horniness layer. And the person feels aroused, but she doesn't feel or he doesn't feel the attraction to the woman. Just like sometimes when you are hungry, but you don't know what you want to eat. And suddenly you start picking up what kinds of food I eat. When normally when you are hungry, you eat to survive. My dear brothers and my sisters, again, for the love of Allah, pay attention to these four biggest detrimental, dangerous signs that you're probably going to break up from your husband. Number one, your partner starts distancing himself or herself either physically or emotionally. Number two, your partner makes big changes to his or her daily routine. She starts taking the kids to swimming. She starts doing more activities with the children. You come home and she doesn't have time for you because she's too busy with the children. And uh, you all the same thing for you. He comes home and he brings work from home. And he, is, he comes home for five minutes and goes out again. And this, he goes to the masjid. Instead of uh, going there 15 minutes and back, he stays there an hour or two. And sometimes he stays for three salats and come home. So that is... Big changes that you want to pay attention to. Number three, you will notice a change in the frequency of your arguments and disagreements. And just because of the headaches and they don't want to talk anymore about it. And number four, the level uh, physic of the physique intimacy or sexual intercourse or intimacy or whatever you want to call it. It goes down south. It goes very, very down to South Africa. And sometimes couples do not want to divorce because the children, what a horrible end, stay trapped in a marriage when you're not happy, when you're not satisfied. For those kids, that when they reach the age of puberty, they will turn to you and say, what have you done for me? And then you're going to feel a lot bitter. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, divorce is a reality we have to deal with. It's one of the two choices. It's either you work and you put 1,000 lines under your work at your relationship, or you bear the consequences of the divorce. Allah has warned in Al-Quran, Some men, they don't want their lives, they, they, their wives, they treat them rubbish and things like that, and they don't divorce them. And the woman stays as a dingling, just like an ornament in the house, nothing else. Enough of seeing couples living south and east. Your children will know when they grow a little bit, that there is no love in that relationship. That, your, that her parents are just physical humans moving. It's horrible. And then you will stamp them for the rest of their lives. Sexual thoughts are healthy. It's just uh, the energy that they generate is not being taken care of. And as much as that is the case, they will keep coming back. And let's not blame shaitan on all those things. Yes, he knows now that your weakest point is sexual thoughts. He will keep coming back and bringing them. Every, he will make you see in everything around you sexual. 
except on the loser who is with you or the loser who is with you, my lady. So for the love of Allah, work out of the relationship. Pay attention to what it is that is happening in your life. It's either you work hard at it or you lose it. The beauty of your relationship is exactly like muscles. It's either you keep working at them at the gym and they are become stronger or you stop working at them and you get fat and healthy, depressed, and then go to the next sheikh, you have sihr. <laughs> sihr. What do you have that you deserve a sihr? It's like a Marilyn Monroe. I, I, when we are jealous, we want to take her from her husband, so we want to put some sihr to take her away from you. Or perhaps it's a Brad Pitt. Uh, let me take him, hijack him from his woman. Come on, guys. Sihr is only in the minds of these um, uh, Muslims. And I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open your eyes. I honestly pray to Allah to open your eyes. Pay attention to these four things. Don't blame the consequences. Blame the roots. Wake up before it's too late. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that this opens the eyes to many of you and to those who are going through hard times to make sure you pay attention. Allah kareem wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdika shadu la ilaha ila anta astaghfiruka wa tubu ilayk. This again, your brother Abdul Salam Abu Hanifa, 0787640 Listen to this and tattoo it on your heart. One day you might need it if it's not today. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.